Welcome to the NLP Talks podcast, bringing you inspirational stories along with a good dose of potentially life-changing NLP strategies. I'm Laura Evans, multi-award winning NLP trainer, and I'm on a mission to help you unleash your potential in business and life. I'm so glad you're here. Pull up a chair, listen in, and let's get started on revealing more about this transformational NLP toolkit. Hey, how you doing? I hope you're really well. Welcome to this special episode where we are going to dive into what's keeping you stuck and preventing you from getting what you really want in any area of your life. This episode is going to be quite workshoppy in its nature. So you're going to want a pen, some paper, a cup of tea or a glass of water and pop on over to nlptalks.com where you're going to find two templates to support this episode. So find season seven, episode seven, and you'll find the two templates there. I'd suggest you print them off and have them to hand. We're going to be looking at the story that you're telling yourself. We're going to be looking at the two things that I think are probably really holding you in that place of not being able to make that progress. We're going to talk about decisions, choices, and two particular coaching models which you can use. Now, whether you're a coach wanting tips and to model me in terms of how I help other people, or you're indeed looking for help yourself, then I think you're going to find this episode really, really helpful. Just a hashtag, just saying, If you need psychological professional support, this episode is not a substitute for that. But if you're looking to get unstuck, sort your mindset out and start making progress in an area of your life, then I think you're going to love this episode. So without further ado, let's get going. What's stopping you? It's a question that I think I ask my coaching clients a huge amount. So you may or may not know, I actually have two businesses. So I have Unleash Your Potential Limited, which is our certified NLP training business. And I also have my coaching business, which is called uh, rather novelly Laura Evans Coaching and Mentoring uh, Limited, which is the other company, which is where I do my coaching. Uh, And if you want to go and check out either of those websites, anishapotential.org.uk or thelauraevans.co.uk. You'll find both of, of those websites. So in my coaching practice, I end up asking that question a huge amount. What stops you? And there's all sorts of reasons why people are not getting the results they want in an area of their life. Now, this could be in their business. It could be in their career. It could be in their personal relationships with their significant other. It could be their health, fitness and well-being, finances. So, so many areas of our life. And a lot of the time when I coach people, they come to me because they have a problem in one or more areas of their, uh, of their life. And my one of my first questions was, stops you and here's the first kind of little bombshell if you like which I'm going to drop which is your life okay or a particular area of your life is a reflection of the sum total of the decisions that you did or did not make. So your results in a a given area of your life are the sum total of the decisions that you did or did not make in that area of your life. Because here's the thing, whether we choose to accept this or not, we are the captain of our own ship. And your life is your life. You can sit there and you can blame other people, circumstances, the environment, governments. I mean, here in the UK and America, there's elections all going on at the moment. Um, You can blame everyone or anything else. You can blame your past, your childhood. But the reality is, as you sit here today listening to me talk, where you are at right now in any given area of your life is the sum total of the decisions which you did or did not take. Now, this is with love. This is not with judgment. This is not a criticism. This is for me about objective observation, which is I am where I am because of the decisions which I have made or not made in my life. And the reality is, if you want to change an area of your life, maybe it's not quite where you want it to be. 
then the only person that can change it is you. And now that sounds all very easy. Oh, Laura, yes, that's easy for you to say. You know, you've done all the mindset work. You're the kind of person that, you know, does all of this. But here's the thing. It's actually not that difficult to get what we call a paradigm shift, as in a shift in the way that you look at things. Because I'll tell you now from past experience, and all my students will tell you this as well, is that when you start to change how you look at things, the things that you look at start to change. I mean, Richard Bandler, if you follow me on social media, you'll know I put a post out last week, um, which was this quote, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of the questions you ask yourself. You see, it's very easy to sit there and just go, oh, well, it is what it is, Laura. If, though, you're willing to ask yourself some questions, and sometimes questions that may feel a little uncomfortable, but if you are willing to ask yourself those questions, it is entirely possible that you could get a shift. Now, my aim out of this episode is by the time I leave you at the end of this episode, I want you to have had a shift, okay? Now, are you up for this, okay? Because if you're not, this is probably not the right episode for you. Um, But if you are up for reviewing an area of your life and trying to work out what it is that is stopping you making progress in that area of your life if you're up for that uh, give me a yes in the comments if you're here to do that um and if you're listening to this live I'm going to assume you're saying yes uh, sorry on the recording I'm assuming you're going to say yes too okay so grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper and I want you to draw a big circle okay now if you need to rummage around in your desk do that now Uh, you're probably going to want to make some notes from this episode anyway so what I want you to do is essentially draw a big circle okay and then what I want you to do is I want you to divide it into eight sections okay so just do this okay on your piece of paper um okay and I want you to put one in the middle and 10 on the outside. Now, you don't need to do it for each of the lines, okay? Now, this, if you're not familiar, is the basis of what we call a wheel of life, okay? Now, if a client ever comes to me for coaching and they're not really sure on what area of their life they want to work on, this is often where I start. Now, what I would like you to do is get your pen and each of these eight sections, I want you to label them. Okay, so I'm going to give you some examples of some very common ones. You can feel free to use these or not, as the case may be. Health is a very popular quadrant of life, whether you call it health, well-being, fitness, whatever you call it. Uh, That might be one segment for you. You might have friends as a segment. So these are the people that you hang out with, your friends, your support network those types of people. Um, I suggest for a lot of people, relationship, as in your relationship with your significant other, may also be another important quadrant in an area of your life. Uh, Some of you might have a quadrant that's family. um, So your uh, family uh, might be one. I'm guessing most of you will have career or business as a quadrant. Um, So by the way, as I'm saying these, I'm actually filling it in myself, okay? So if you're employed, it's probably career. If you are self-employed, it's probably business. So whatever works for you, uh, put in there. Some of you might have a quadrant that says wealth or finances. Again, that might be another quadrant for you. Now, the others, I mean, these are kind of down to you. Some of you might have a quadrant that says maybe fun, leisure, me time. Um, So this is um, what you do to recharge your soul. I don't know, maybe you have hobbies that you do or something like that. Some of you might have uh, religion or spirituality. Uh, That might be a quadrant that's important to you. Some of you might have personal growth as a quadrant. Okay. now everybody's wheel is going to be different because it's the wheel of, in this case, my life or your life. Okay. Um, and when clients come to me and say, oh, my goodness, Laura, my life is a mess. I don't even know where to start. Then a wheel of life can be a really good place. Okay. now I'm going to assume that you've drawn this on a piece of paper. Okay, and you have got it in front of you. And I now want you to rate each area of your life. Okay, so if one out of 10 is in the middle and 10 out of 10 is on the outside, where would you put a line for that? So, for example, you might say at the moment, my health and well-being, 
that's about a five out of 10, Laura. And then you're maybe shading half. OK, uh, friends. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good, to be fair. So I might say, Do you know what, that's an eight out of 10. So I will then um, use the, 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 the number eight. Uh, relationships yeah that's pretty good so i'm gonna say that's a 10 out of 10 yeah that's really where i want it to be that's brilliant um career or business in my case mm, i don't know maybe i might give that a seven and so on and so on now you can, can continue to do this now when you get to a quadrant that's not a 10 out of 10 you've got to ask yourself a question how has that happened? OK, and that area of your life is a reflection of the decisions that you did or didn't take in that area of your life. OK, as I've been saying. So what we've then got to start to ask ourselves is which area of our life is the one that's most important right now for us to make progress in? OK, now. Some of the clients I work with will come to me because um, they want to improve their business performance. I, I uh, coach a lot of coaches um, and mentor a lot of coaches, but maybe their business is not where they want it to be. And that's the area of their life they want to focus on. Or it might be career. I might be working with a senior manager who just wants to push through to that VP director level and, and they're stuck. Um, they don't seem to be able to break through uh, to the area that they want. It might be someone that might have come to me and said, you know what, my relationship with my significant other is not where I would want it to be. And what is it that I want? Now, I don't know what area of your life you've chosen. It could be your health and well-being. It could be your uh, business. It could be your you know, leisure and hobbies. OK, and in some respects, it doesn't matter what quadrant you've picked, because the principles I'm going to share today apply to all of these areas of our life. Pretty much bar a few exceptions, but pretty much. And this wheel of life is a really good barometer to find out where my coaching clients are when they start working with me. And then sometimes I'll get them to do it part way through. And then sometimes I'll get them to do it at the end as well. So we can really see the progress that we've been able to make. Now, here comes the next bit. And I'm going to warn you, this might be a little uncomfortable and it's not meant to be. It's meant to be um, objective. OK, this is not designed as a session for you to sit there and mentally beat yourself up. Okay? Can I just say hashtag warning here? Right. Um, this is not if you're someone that sits there and uses these types of sessions to mentally beat yourself up and go, see, I'm rubbish. And blah, blah, we're going to come on to all of that. Um, that's not my plan here. OK, now what I want you to do is pick one area of your life that is not where you currently want it to be. And I want you to look at really hone in on that one area. Don't try and take the whole of your life in. Just pick one area. And I want you to ask yourself this question. As you look back over the last six months, just let's just do six months. OK, if you look back over the last six months of that one area of your life, what do you observe in that area of your life? What do you observe? And if it's safe to do so, um, you could close your eyes as you're doing this, if that's helpful, if it's not safe to because you're driving or something, obviously, please refrain from doing that. Um, but as you observe that area of your life over the last six months, with no judgment, this is absolutely um, about you being objective. So if you were if this was someone else's life and you were looking in objectively, objectively observe. OK, now, if you're trained in NLP, uh, you might want to do that in a more disassociated way, as in kind of fly out a little bit and look back at that last six months um, if you're. Uh, familiar with disassociation and timelines and, and, and whatnot. And if you're not, don't worry. Um, but objectively look at that. And as you look at that one area of your life over the last six months, I wonder if you could give it a word or an emotion, a label, and just write that word down somewhere. OK, because it's always a bit easier to manage when it's a little bit distant from us, disassociated on a piece of paper rather than in our head and heart. OK, so, for example, my health and well-being over the last six months, as I objectively observe the last six month area of my life um, and I look at that, 
I haven't been to the gym as regularly as I would like. There's no judgment to that. There's no reason need for me to rationalize that, excuse that. It's an observation. I haven't been to the gym um, that much in the last six months. And I, as I observe that last six months of my life, I can absolutely appreciate that I've deprioritized my health and fitness over the last six months. And I haven't put myself first. I haven't necessarily made my mental and emotional and spiritual well-being a priority because I've been so busy with work. And I'm not justifying and I don't want to judge myself for that. But it's an observation that I haven't done as much with that area of my life. And if I was to give that a word as I sit here right now live, and this is real, by the way, I'm not making this up. This is real. As I look at that area of my life, my health and well-being over the last six months, the emotion that pops up for me when I do that is the word sad. Not quite sure where that's come from. Uh, My unconscious mind has given me that feeling. But I feel a bit sad. I feel as if perhaps I've not given myself as much love as maybe I should have and looked after myself. I sit here a little smug because I went to yoga this morning um, with my wonderful yoga teacher, stroke massage therapy, stroke Reiki master, Michelle, who I know listens to this podcast. So Michelle, hello, love you lots. Um, But I've been and done yoga this morning for an hour and a half. So actually today I have done that. But over the last six months, which is what we're looking at, I don't have that pattern. So I then have to sit there and think, okay, so how do the results appear to that person? Well, distracted would be the word I'd give. The challenge then that we have is, well, what is it then that I'm willing to do to grow in this area? Because this is where we then start to look at this area of our life. Because if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got, right? It's a very famous saying. So the question then that we have to ask ourselves in that area of life is, what is it that we're willing to do to improve, develop or grow this area of our life? Now, again, yoga this morning. So actually today I'm pretty chuffed, but that's not a habit. That's not something that I'm doing regularly because I get so busy. So the question is, what are we willing to do to grow? Who are we willing to become to enable that improvement to happen? And what is it that we want to have so that we can do that. Be, do and have. If you've done your master prep training with me, you'll be all familiar with be, do and have and how important those three words are. But I just want to make it quite simple. The question is, are you willing? Are you willing to prioritise? Are you willing to say that this is the area of my life I want to make the most improvement? Because here's the hard truth, ladies and gentlemen, listening to this podcast. Most people's challenge is not what they don't know what to do. It's not that they've not watched lots of videos on social media, that they've read the books, that they've done the self-help. That's not the problem. The problem is most people's unwillingness to grow, change and adapt. That's actually where it's at. Because if I want to improve my health and well-being, using myself as an example, and you'll have your own. If I want to improve that area of my life, I have to be willing to start some things. I have to be willing to stop some things. I have to be willing to adapt. I have to be willing to change. I have to be willing to grow. Because if I'm not willing to grow, change and adapt, then the reality is I can sit here and look six months into the future and nothing will have changed. Because I didn't change anything because I didn't do anything differently. And that's one of the biggest problems with us as human beings. And I say it with love to myself and to you, is our challenge is our unwillingness to grow, change and adapt. Now, what sits behind that? Because this is where most coaching stops, okay? So we can do the conscious mind coaching. We can do all of these things. The question, though, is what stops us growing, changing and adapting? What stops us? What stops you? What stops me? Now, it might be that there is something called secondary gain at play. Now, if you've done courses with me, you'll be all familiar with secondary gain. But secondary gain is where someone gains more by holding on to their problem or the status quo than they perceive consciously or unconsciously that they'll gain 
by letting that problem go or making that change. So you have to start to ask yourself the question, if I have always been like this over the last six months, and if I'm likely to be in the future, unless I change something, and I'm unwilling to change something, then what am I getting out of it? What am I getting out of it? What is the payoff to me of this status quo? What is the benefit to me of that story I'm telling myself? Because I can tell you now, you'll have a story you tell yourself just like I've had a story that I've told myself. Because the story I tell myself in relation to my health and well-being is I don't have time. I'm too busy. In fact, if you listen to my language earlier on in the podcast, which is what all great NLP coaches will have done, you'll have noticed I use that as an excuse. The story I'm telling myself is that I don't have time. And at the moment, I'm using my time in other ways. So am I willing to make a change? Am I willing to adapt? Am I willing to grow? Am I willing to say no to some things so that I can say yes to other things? Now, this morning as a great example, I mean, there's a million and one things I could and should be doing in my business today. Um, I mean, if you can see the state of my desk, I mean, I'm glad you can't. But if you could, you'd see there's paper everywhere here. There is so much going on behind the scenes. And if you're a student of mine, I'm going to be coming into the Facebook group later today. Uh, we have a a closed Facebook group of community online where all our students hang out. I don't know how many hundreds of us there are in there now, but um, I'm going to be sharing some stuff with them later. But this morning I made a decision, right? This goes back to the beginning of this podcast episode. I made a decision this morning that my health and well-being was important. And so I got myself to the yoga class because I decided that I needed to, to do something about it. So I have made a change. But the story I'm telling myself is probably going to keep me stuck if I'm not careful, i.e. I'm too busy, I've got work to do, I've got all these other demands on my life and I just can't. Now, I just can't. We're going to come on to beliefs in a minute. But there will be a whole set of beliefs that will sit behind the story that we're telling ourselves. Now, I'm going to come back to secondary gain in a little while, okay? But as you sit looking at your wheel of life that you did just now, and you've picked your area, you've asked yourself the question about how has that panned out in the last six months? And then you've asked yourself the question, what am I willing to do? Now, if you're willing to do nothing, then you should accept that you're not willing to do anything. Maybe it's actually not that important area of your life after all. Maybe on reflection, you've gone, do you know what other things are more important? And if they are, make the decision that it's not important and stop beating yourself up about it, because we're all very good at that too, right? I started the episode, if you joined us partway through, I started the episode talking about your life is a reflection of the decisions that you did or did not take. And we have to be happy with those decisions. And if it's not a priority, it's not a priority. But if it is a priority, the question is, are you willing to make the change? Are you willing to do what it takes? You see, I'm going to talk slightly differently about this just for a moment, because there is a part of me that wants to change. There's probably a part of you that wants to change. And that part of me is really keen to sort out my health and well-being because actually I know that in a year, five, 10, 15 years time, the decisions I make now will impact me in the future. The decisions I make now about what I eat, the exercise I do, my mobility, my flexibility, the decisions I make now will impact me. I don't want my partner pushing me around in a wheelchair in 10 years time because I I can't m walk because I'm not mobile. But those decisions are now. Life is an accumulation of those decisions. So that part of me that believes it's important to sort out my health and well-being, that part of me needs something from me. Now, this is all going to sound a little bit, <laughs> a little bit funny to start, but bear with me. So if that part of me needs the other parts of me collectively to, to think, feel, do and act differently. So as you look at your wheel of life and you look at that area of your life where you want to make a change, that part of you needs something from you. And the question is, what is it? What need is it that's not currently being met? And then back to the other question, which is, are you willing to make a change? I mean, let's put, use a different example. Let's do relationships, right? So let's say you focus on relationships and your relationship with your significant other is not where you want it to be. And uh, let's say it's a five out of 10, hypothetically. Um, you don't want to extrapolate that forward because actually that could take you into areas that uh, you really wouldn't want to happen. So the question is, as you are here today, are you willing? 
Are you willing to make a change? Are you willing to do that? And if so, that part of you needs to make a change. The rest of you, right? So let me use, again, let's go back to work because work's a good example, right? So I have to make a decision about working smarter, not harder. I have to stop doing so many hours at work if I'm going to create the time to focus on my health and well-being. Like going to the gym and, you know, doing weights or cardio or going to yoga for my flexibility and things like that's not going to do itself. I can't wave a magic wand. Right. So I'm going to have to engineer like I did this morning, a 90 minute gap to go and do the yoga class. So that's a decision that I have made. So for your area of life that you're looking at, that part of you that you want to improve that area of your life, what is it? that the rest of you has to change, okay? In my case, re-evaluating perhaps how many hours I'm working um, and maybe creating the time to do that. Kind of an interesting thought, isn't it? Now, we're going to just leave that there because that's all quite deep and quite meaningful. Now, I'm going to move on now to talk about an NLP technique, which I've never talked about on the podcast before. And it's something called logical levels. There are all sorts of versions of logical levels. There is also different types of logical levels of therapy, blah, 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 right? So, and that's not it. I'm talking here about the model called logical levels. Now, the original work with logical levels was done by Gregory Bateson back in the 50s and 60s. Um, and it was popularized by Robert Diltz in the 80s. And a lot of people attribute Diltz, Robert Diltz, one of the pioneers of NLP, uh, with logical levels. And Diltz did evolve the work of Gregory Bateson, but Gregory Bateson was actually the creator of it back in the 50s and 60s. Now, to follow along as I'm doing this, what I want you to do is put your wheel of life to one side and get yourself a, a fresh sheet of paper. And what I want you to do is I want you to draw a triangle. It's going to become a pyramid, by the way, in a minute. And I want you to put some lines on it to create five levels. This is always the problem when I do the exercises with you all on the podcast. So if you're watching live, you'll see I'm showing up a piece of paper with a big triangle right across my A4 sheet of paper. Um, and I've drawn four lines to create five sections. Now we're going to fill this in. Now, this is not, by the way, can I just say, this is not to be designed to be a comprehensive teaching session of this model. I'm just using it very quickly here uh, to help us with the purpose of today's podcast episode. So can I just say that first before I get any emails from people going, oh, my goodness, like you didn't explain that properly. And I'm not doing a teaching session. I just want to help. Now, the bottom run, I want you to write the word environment in it. OK, so just write the environment in the very bottom run. The very first thing when we look at any problem in an area of our life, the very first thing we have to start to consider is what's the environmental factors which have led us to this? So you can ask yourself questions that start with like where or when, where am I, what, what have I got? You know, all of those uh, types of things, environmental factors. Now, usually the environmental factors are things that we wish we could change. But at this stage, you're not going to wave a magic wand and make them disappear. So your environmental factors will underpin some of the situation that you find yourself in okay these circumstances now the next level up from that is we're going to label behaviors okay so just write behaviors in this uh, next run now the next part of this model is about your behaviors it's about your actions it's about what you are currently doing um, and in the future, what you might do differently and your behavior, what you do or do not do in any given moment has a big impact on the results that you might be getting or not getting in an area of your life. So if you're not getting what you want, there is a probability that your behaviours, your actions are having a part to play in those uh, in those results. OK, now the next level up from that, we're going to call skills and capability. So this is very much about understanding that when we do all learn anything, we're a novice to start with. And that's to be expected. We don't know what we don't know. And to start with your skill or capability level in anything might be low and you can get better at it. 
So if it's a skill that you can't currently do that you wish you could do, then you could learn. You could go to a class. You could um, be mentored. You could uh, take a course. There are all sorts of ways about how you could um, develop a skill that you are yet to master. And the problem for a lot of people is they avoid developing those skills. And it sounds odd to say that. But there's a reason why uh, we might not even get started at times. I'm going to come on to that uh, very shortly. It's a level that people will often get stuck at because they they might not even get in the game because they just sit on the sideline because they're not even willing to put themselves in the arena for fear. And we're going to come back to fear because this is a big issue um, as to why some people don't get the results that they want. Okay. now the next run up after that is beliefs. Now, when you see logical levels, some people will label this next level beliefs and values. I'm not going to talk about values today. So I'm just going to write beliefs in that. And your beliefs in any given scenario have a massive, massive impact on the results that you may or may not uh, be getting because Your beliefs determine what you believe is important Um, and they have a massive, massive bearing on every area of your life. They are essentially perhaps started as thoughts you had, but they've gone from just being thoughts. We don't really think about them anymore because they just are. You know, I mean, if someone had a, a limiting belief that they're not good enough. That's not something that they ponder over anymore. They evaluate, or maybe I am, or maybe I'm not. They believe that if it's a limiting belief, okay? So it's gone past the thinking stage to become part of the fabric of who they are. And our beliefs solidify our perceptions of things, our perceptions of what is possible and it isn't. You'll often find around beliefs, people just kind of say, well, it just is the way it is. And The problem is that if you've done courses with me, you'll know I say this a lot, that your beliefs aren't true, but you act as if they're true. And that's what makes them a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, You may well be familiar with the Henry Ford quote, and I'm now told it's not Henry Ford's quote. But anyway, that's what made it famous. Whether you believe you can or you can't, you're absolutely right. Um, I'm a massive fan of a guy in Australia called Kerwin Ray. And I remember watching him talk about beliefs once on stage um, on a video. And he, he, he encapsulated beliefs so well because he said, basically, all your beliefs are lies. So why don't you pick a better set? Now, with an NLP practitioner toolkit, you'll learn how to change beliefs. But it's an interesting concept. Now, I was listening to some training the other day and I had a sudden realisation because if you were write out the word belief or beliefs, can you see that there's a word hidden within the word belief? Three letters right in the middle. L-I-E. Lie. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting? Now, it's fascinating when you start to look at this in the context of what we're doing. So you'll often find yourself in in terms of your beliefs about this particular problem or challenge that you're facing. You'll often find yourself um, saying that essentially it's just the way it is. I can't blah, blah, blah because of blah, blah, blah. It's not a question. It's, It's a statement. It is something that you believe. And yeah, it's fascinating. Anyway, listen, I could do a whole episode just on that. So let's move on. Right. Now, the very top run is that of identity. Who am I? Okay. And when you start making any kind of I am statement, otherwise known as I ams, plural, um, but I am statements, these are when they absolutely act. There's a reason it's the top of the pyramid, right? It, it acts like a beacon. It, it directs everything because when something becomes part of the fabric of who you are as a person, that can be really quite challenging. And your identity guides pretty much everything in any area of your life, who you are. Um, so, so when you look at this model I want you now to look at this model and as I said this is not like a teaching the whole model in in its in its entirety but if you look at this model in relation to the area we're looking at so you did your wheel of life you've picked an area of your life you asked yourself some questions I now want you to look at that area of your life in relation to this model and start to work out what really is going on here 
with this area of your life? And does this tool give you any kind of insight as to where your challenge uh, might be? Because if I use business as an example, I've used a lot of health and fitness today because I know it's quite prevalent for a lot of people. But if I use business as an example, let me work the model through in terms of business. So environment, okay. So if you take a snapshot of any business, there's going to be environmental factors about where I operate the business, how I operate the business. There will be uh, circumstances that um, happen around that. You know, I'm currently living across two houses that has its, you know, its own challenges. There will be certain business assets that I have, like my website, this podcast, cash in the bank and all of those things. OK. Then if you look at behaviours, so in terms of my business, you stick with business as an example, what are the actions that I am or am not taking at the moment with my business? Let's say my business wasn't where I wanted it to be. Then I would have to start asking myself the questions, what is it that I'm doing or not doing at the moment? Remember, our behaviour is what action we do or don't take. So what is it that I'm not doing that I could start doing? What is it that I could stop doing? And what are the actions around my business that I'm currently taking that are leading me um, to be in the place that I'm currently in? Action is required to get results. Okay, I'm just going to say that in case anybody listening to the podcast thinks we get magic wands or anything. We don't. Actions, what you do and don't get. One of the biggest misconceptions of things like the law of attraction and uh, the secret and things like that is that people think, oh, you know, stuff just lands in your lap. Um, It doesn't. You have to do something about it. So then you've got your skill and your capability. So at the moment in in the area of my business, I might not have all the skills and capabilities that I need. Okay, great. So how am I going to get those? What is the lack of skill or capability that I currently have that means that that's getting um, in the way? What could I get better at? And how could skills or capabilities impact the results that are currently going on uh, for me? Then you've got your beliefs. I mean, there's a whole host of beliefs that any one of us could have that may be impacting the results we're getting in an area of our lives. Um, So, for example, beliefs like I'm not good enough or um, like some of one of my coaching clients last week said to me when I was doing business coaching, But Laura, I'm a newbie and I'm like, okay, right. These are beliefs and identity issues that this client has that I I, I need to help her with. Or I'm not important. That would be a a belief. I'm not good enough. There'll be all sorts of beliefs that are holding you in the place that you're currently in. And are those beliefs actually serving you or, 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 or could that be part of the problem? And then you've got your identity. Their identity in relation to the problem. Um, And if I was, um, you know, uh, uh, um, starting out as a new business owner, for example, I'm a newbie might be the label that I give myself. Like I say, any I am statement is likely uh, to lead you to an identity type statement. And when you look at the problem that you've been looking at, when you look at an area of your life, remember this whole podcast episode, okay, has been about working through a process, okay. So when you are looking at the area of your life, it's not where you want it to be, and you start looking at these levels, I bet you, I bet you that all of a sudden you're getting some kind of breakthrough in thinking about how you've ended up the way that you've ended up with this area of your life. Um, now, I can't remember who said it now, but it's not my quote. I mean, nothing much in personal development is is original, right? Most things are rehashed. But I remember reading this and I'm going to try and um, I scribbled it down very quickly the other day because I wanted to share it and it goes like this we must be the very thing that sets the out sorry start again Laura misreading my own handwriting take that back right (laughs) we must be the very thing that gets the outcome that we want the byproduct of who this person is you see How you see yourself, your identity, your beliefs, all the things we've been talking about, these are vital in terms of determining the results that you do or do not get in an area of your life, your view of yourself. Now, it's all very well doing that exercise going, okay, this is the area of my life that's not where I want it to be. Um, I've asked myself all those questions, Laura, brilliant. Um, I've now done the logical levels and I've done the pyramid and that's given me much more insight. But this is still showing us our current state. And I want you to sit there and be really honest with yourself. Okay, objective observation. I've said this already. Objective observation. This is not about... Um, beating ourselves up 
But if you look at that wheel and that pyramid, and I'm hoping if you haven't already, make some notes around the pyramid about this problem and our discussion that we've just had. And I want you to imagine nothing changes. Remember I said at the beginning of the uh, episode, the biggest challenge that most people have is that they are unwilling to grow, change and adapt. You see, if you are unwilling to change, grow and adapt, I can tell you this will be what will happen in six months time. This will be where you're at in two years time, three years time and five years time. Because, you see, this stuff that we've written down around this pyramid Think of it as the things that control your actions. They control what you think and feel. It's almost like our mind is like a computer. But if you do nothing, then take it out into the future. Now, if you prefer to, you could close your eyes and do that. Now, if you're driving, operate machinery, again, refrain from doing so. But as you stare at those bits of paper and you say, OK, so how will my life be in six months time if nothing changes? How will it be in a year's time if nothing changes? But let me into a secret. Nothing is not what will happen. Because if you don't change something, my probability for you is that the situation will get worse. It's not if you think about any problem that you've had in your life that you've buried your head in the sand about, which you've chosen not to face into for all the plausible reasons. It didn't just stay the same, did it? Invariably, it got worse. Health and fitness, I've used as the example the majority of the time today. If I don't prioritise my health and fitness, it's not just going to stay the same in a year, three, five years time, is it? If I don't look after myself today, in three, five years time, my body's going to seize up. If I don't eat healthily, then, you know, my blood pressure is going to go up. I'm going to get sick. And the problem is this. Most people wait until the pain of being where they are is bad enough that they are forced to act. How many, be honest with yourself, how many of us I've buried our head in the sand around a problem and just hoped that um, if we ignore it, it will go away. It doesn't. It doesn't. And then how many of us have got so sick we've ended up in maybe hospital or we've ended up in different situations? By the way, touch words. <laughs> Refrain from taking that as a suggestion. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, what is it going to take? What is it going to take? Because most people are driven with what we call away from motivation. And if you were a master practitioner of mine, um, you'll know all about away from motivation. Until the pain of being where you are is bad enough, people seem unwilling to change. And I think that's sad. Because there is a possibility for you to make a decision. And I said at the very beginning of this podcast episode that your life is a reflection of the decisions that you did or did not make. And we all have to have broad shoulders about that. It's not about judging ourselves. This is about objectively observing and being honest with ourselves about, you know, where this is going to be in the future. Now, there's another way we can use this pyramid model. And I think we should do that now. So I want you to get another sheet of paper and I want you to redraw out that pyramid. I've run out of paper. I didn't have enough paper here today. Um, anyway, you get yourself another piece of paper and I want you to redraw out that pyramid. OK, so just write, draw the pyramid or the triangle and then put your four lines in and write environment on the bottom run, behaviours in the middle run, skills and capabilities, beliefs and identity. OK, just write the model on a fresh sheet of paper. And when you think about that area of your life where you want to make an improvement. So I was using health and well-being for mine as the example today. Right. If you want to make an improvement in that area of your life. Let's start from the top of the pyramid. Who do you need to be? Who do you need to be? 
Now, on your sheets of paper, I'd, I'd get this written down, right? So next to identity, who do I need to be? I, 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 what are your I am's? I am important might be one of your things for health. I'm important. My health and fitness is important. But what is your I am? What is your label that you're going to give yourself? Right now, if this was business and you're doing business, your identity might be I am a kick ass entrepreneur. I am an amazing coach. And that might be your identity you give yourself at the very top. So think about the I am statements for you. If you're going to be the person, remember I said earlier, we must be the very thing that gets us the outcome that we want. Who do we need to be? That needs to go right at the top of our pyramid, okay? Then you have to then come down and think, right, so what beliefs do I need? What are the beliefs that are gonna support me to have that identity? What are the things that I need to believe? Now, if you're NLP trained or you're coming on one of my courses or whatever, you'll know exactly how to do a belief change. And so allow yourself to dream for a moment. Put your limitations to one side. What are the beliefs that you need to hold? Now, those of you done NLP pr tra practitioner training, you'll be familiar with empowering beliefs. So we talked earlier about limiting beliefs that hold you back or disempower you. Um, empowering beliefs are things that are going to support you. They're going to empower you. So what beliefs do you need in this area of your life that are going to help you to make the progress that you're looking to make in this area of life? Beliefs. I am important. Um, I I do love myself. I love myself. I, I care for me. I care for my future. I don't know what they are, right? Beliefs. Okay. Then you come down, okay, to skills and capabilities. What skills and capability do you need in, a, in, a, in order to enable you to realize the improvements that you want to have? Do you need to learn something? Do you need to go on a course? Do you need to go and get a coach? Do you need to find a mentor? Do you need to, um, you know, not necessarily start from scratch? Maybe you've already started, but maybe there's more training to be done. You know, I mean, I've just invested another £10,000 in my own business education. Now, I've been in business for 10 years. If you're a student of mine, you'll know that I'm always readily sharing my business knowledge with everyone in my community um, when they come on board in our business academy and all of those things. Um, you know, and I love sharing what I'm learning. Um, so we're never done. You know, a lot of people will look at me and I don't say this to beef myself up. But a lot of people look at me and go, oh, my goodness, Laura, you're a multi award winning entrepreneur, um, you know, and you clearly are running a really successful business and all of those things. Learning never stops learning never stops there's always stuff you can learn I say to the students in the training I learn from them as much as they learn from me every time I step into that training room so your skills and capabilities okay now that then bring that comes down another level to your behaviors your actions now here's the funky thing about this model your identity your beliefs and your capabilities and your skills those three things directly impact your behavior and your actions that you do or do not take because when you change your beliefs you change your identity you change your values and all the other things by the way there's a lot more that sits behind all of this but let's just keep it simple but when you make those mindset changes your behaviors will start to change and that's not to say you shouldn't consciously take action of course absolutely and that will also impact on your circumstances and your environment because as i said earlier on when you change your perspective the things that you look at change because you change the way you look at them now the second pyramid then i'm hoping i'm really hoping as i'm sat here in the office at home i'm really hoping that this is giving you some massive breakthroughs and some massive insights into what you can do to shift this area of your life. Now, I now want you to take the second pyramid. And if that were to happen, if you made that happen, imagine the difference it would make in six months time, in a year, three and five years time to that area of your life. If you choose right now, to make the decision that some of this stuff needs to happen. I, I, you know, now not now because we're on a podcast and I'm fast running out of time. But in the future, tonight, tomorrow, 
I want you to really embellish this version two of the of, of the pyramid. And then I want you to um, really associate into it. Now, if you're into mindfulness, uh, meditation, visualizations, whatever, you have got to bring this to life. If you've done an NLP course with me, I'm going to tell you, you need to go and write a well-formed outcome, i.e. a goal for this. OK, and if you can get a colleague uh, to clean your timeline and put the goal into your timeline even better. OK, and I know a lot of our students have buddies that they do ongoing personal development with each other, which is absolutely fantastic. If you're in one of my students and you're in the Facebook group in our community, um, then just put a post in there and say, look, anybody want a bit of practice? Let's do some stuff together. Let's help each other out. There is always a way to do that. Now, if you're not in our community, then you can come join our community if you want to come and do the training and you want to come and learn how to change beliefs and you want to change um, all of the stuff because it's all about choices and decisions. That's where it comes from. It's all about choices and decisions. Let me give you a metaphor. If you've ever been on a boat, OK, uh, a number of you will know that I used to love diving. I used to scuba dive regularly. Absolute passion of mine. But if you've ever been in a boat when the anchors got stuck at the bottom of the seabed, if you think about that boat that's got a motor and that anchor is stuck fast at the bottom of the seabed, the only way that you can attempt to start to move that boat is to use all the power you have in the engine of that boat to overpower um, that and drag it. And if you've ever been on a boat that's dragging an anchor, you'll know what that feels like. Um, I remember being on a boat once that was dragging its anchor and they literally put the boat into full throttle. We hardly moved. The engines were going absolutely crazy because they were desperately trying to free the anchor. It takes huge effort. It takes huge amounts of energy, effort, time if you're metaphorically dragging your anchor. Um, and I, I'm sure the students that will listen to this uh, podcast episode and we've got a few here live on the episode. So lovely to have you guys here. Um, and also, I'm sure loads will listen in the future. Before they did their NLP training, I bet you they felt like they were metaphorically dragging their anchor in a whole host of areas of their life. But you see, when you do the mindset work and when you actually start to free yourself from the things that hold you back, the whole world becomes possible. I genuinely believe that every single human being has all the resources that they need to succeed. It's just I spend a lot of time in the training room and coaching, helping other people start to believe that's possible. And when you have the toolkit, you will start to realise that that's absolutely possible with NLP training and, and, and coaching and, and whatnot. But I want to go back as I start to move towards the end of the episode. I want to go back and talk a little more about the fact that one of the biggest challenges that most people have is they're not willing to make the choices and make the decisions that will enable them to grow change and adapt we can sit here and do as many pyramids as we like we can sit here and do any any model that we like but it all boils down to are you gonna do something about it? Are you committed to making progress? And that doesn't necessarily mean you've got to come and do a course with me. I'd love you to, of course I would, because then I can really help you. And if it's not doing a course with me, what is it that you're going to do? You see, when you go back to secondary gain, when people gain more by holding on to problems or keeping the status quo, then they gain by letting it go. You have to start to understand that the brain and the mind doesn't do anything that isn't useful. The brain and mind doesn't do anything that it doesn't see as useful. Secondary gain has a use in an area of your life. And are you willing to make the change? Are you willing to let that story go that's keeping you stuck? Are you willing to let go of the current payoff or benefit that you gain by having your life the way it is so that you can be and do something and achieve something even better? A lot of people are very frazzled and very burnt out right now. There are only so many hours in the day. And the one thing that I seem to be telling people an awful lot in coaching at the moment is what are you going to stop doing to create the time and space for this to happen? Because if you keep just adding and adding and adding and adding, then you're going to get burnt out. 
You have to do something different. Change your mindset. Let go of the stuff from the past. Stop drag, dragging your metaphorical anchor. You see, a lot of people, I'm going to use another metaphor, a lot of people drift through life. It just is what it is, Laura. The problem is those people will end up metaphorically one day waking up and go, how did I end up here? You ended up there because of the choices and the decisions that you were or were not willing to take. Now, aside from all of that, let me talk very briefly because secondary gain has a benefit. You've got to understand the benefit before you can start doing it. The one thing that, well, there's lots of things, but one of the key things that a great coach, particularly NLP coaches, can do for you is find you the root cause of the issue and really get behind what's driving that behavior and start to make the changes at the mindset level, enable your behavior to start to change automatically. That's where the magic is. If there was any, there isn't any magic, by the way, but if there was, that's where you see people light up. But what really stops people, there are two things, in my opinion, that really stop people. And they are both born out of fear. When you stop to ask yourself the question, what are you really afraid of? What are you really afraid of? If you were to make that change and you know what you need to do and you know what's possible and you know all of that stuff, what is it? that stops you, that keeps you stuck? What are you really afraid of? Because most people, they'll say that their secondary gain story is about protecting them, keeping them safe, all of those things. The two things that come up time and time again when I listen to people is people are afraid, afraid of failure and they are afraid of judgment. They are two things that keep people stuck. They are afraid of failing and they are afraid of being judged. Now, when you've done your NLP training, you don't worry so much about those things. But life before NLP for me was very much about those two things. People, let's do one at a time. We'll do failure, then we'll do judgment. Failure. So many people over the years that I have trained and coached, they don't always use the words, I fear failure. But a lot of the reason that people are stuck, the reason that people don't take the action is because they fear failing. I won't even put my hat in the ring because what if I fail? Now, some of that's about judgment, which we'll come on to. But if you want to go after what you want, you have to accept that you may fail, right? I tell you now, if I gave up the first time I failed in business, I would not be here today. I fail regularly in my business. I fail regularly. Because the thing is, you've got to be in the arena to be able to stand a chance of getting the outcome that you want. But if you're too scared to even step into the arena, then then you're always going to stay stuck. What stops you stepping in the arena? Fear. And sometimes that's because of failure. You see, the thing is this. There are two possible outcomes if ever you take any action. Two possible outcomes. You either step in the arena and get that result. Happy days. If you step into the arena and you have a go at doing it, if you fail, in inverted commas, because I don't actually believe it exists, but anyway, that's a whole other story. But if you fail, there's always a lesson. There is always a lesson. So you either win because you do it or you learn something let me tell you a story from the training room you if you follow me on social media will know all about the fact we do ball breaks on our uh, on our master prep program and sometimes people don't break their boards and i always say to people when you do your ball break on master prep you win either way because you either win because you broke the board and that's all really exciting and amazing and loads of us have got broken boards at the master practitioners And if you don't break it, you learn something. Right now in board breaking, it's usually you'll learn something about yourself in terms of following processes, um, learnings around commitment, you know, all that kind of stuff. But but you learn something. Now, whether you believe in the universe or not, you all know that life is a cyclical process. I remember a managing director telling me many, many years ago when I just started out after uni. Laura, I'm sick and tired of people not attempting to change things. 
And I want people to know that it's okay to fail. Right now, there was cultural issues in that organisation. There was consequences to failing, but we'll put that to one side. But he said, I want people to do things differently. I want them to give it a go. And if you fail the first time, I'm going to say, what did you learn? You fail a second time, I'm going to go, what didn't you learn last time that you need to learn this time? And if you fail a third time, then we're going to have a conversation, right, at work. But if you believe in the universe, let me say this to you. The universe will send you messages. And the first time it will send you messages which create a little ripple, like you're dropping a little pebble into, into, um, you know, into a pond or into a lake. You'll get a little ripple. And if you don't take the learning, then it will start throwing a rock in. OK, so you don't take the learning, your unconscious mind, universe, whatever you believe will give you another learning. And this time it's not just a pebble dropped in the water. It's a rock. And if you drop a rock in a pond, you'll know that creates more waves. And if you still don't learn, it will drop a boulder in the pond. <laughs> if you ever drop the boulder in the pond, you'll know what a mess that makes. You see, when you are in the arena, you stand a chance of winning. You stand a chance of getting that result. And if you don't, you will get a lesson. But if you mask that lesson as a failure, it will stop you from having another attempt. You will keep getting the same lesson until you take the lesson. <laughs> I've learned that the hard way. But fearing failure stops so many people. But when you reframe it in your head and go, do you know what? I'm going to give it a go because the chances of the upside are massive and really positive. And if it doesn't work, then I'm going to take the lesson. I'm going to take the lesson. I'm going to think about what am I going to do differently next time? This goes back to the point at the beginning of the podcast about growing, changing and adapting. Take the lesson. Take the lesson and apply the lesson. And then you've got nothing to fear because you either achieve it or you learn something. Just make sure you take the lesson, though, right? Then <laughs> keep making the same mistake over and over again. And there are lots of people I know that do that. Failure is not. doesn't really exist. Right in my head anyway, right for you, but it doesn't for me. The other thing I said that stops people is judgment. People do not like being judged. Guess what? Guess what? You're being judged anyway. So you might as well get in the ring and give yourself a chance. You're being judged anyway. We're all being judged every minute of every day. And here's the news. We all do it too. We look at other people that were around us in our head. We make judgments. Do you know what? You're doing just fine. And everybody will get judged. Everybody will judge others. Like we like to think that we're lovely, nice people and we don't judge other people. We do. We do. We look around all the time. Well, when I done it like that. Well, oh, have you seen her or seen him? It's innocent little comments, but they're all judgments. So if people are going to judge you anyway, then have a go. I mean, let me use the example of fit, health and fitness, right? Joining a gym, let's use that as an example, because again, health and fitness is something that a lot of us can relate to. A lot of people will not prioritise their health and fitness because they believe they have to go to a gym and they don't want to go to the gym because they don't want to be judged. Right, you go into the gym, there's a gym not far from where I live. Right. And I went in and I felt intimidated. There were lots of people there, all very fit individuals, beautiful looking people, all clearly very good at what they were doing. And I felt intimidated. I didn't want to be judged. I didn't want to. This goes back to the pyramid. I didn't have the skill or the capability. I didn't believe I could. And I didn't believe I should be there. And I didn't want to be judged. So I didn't go. Never went back. Judgment is. Yeah, you, like you're giving away your power when you fear being judged. And it's unimportant what anybody else thinks of you. There's an old saying, isn't it, that goes around, what anybody else thinks about you is none of your business. Because if you're going to spend the rest of your life worrying about what other people think of you, worrying about other people judging you, then you're going to have a pretty miserable life. But I understand it. I understand it. I do understand it. But when you do NLP training, the fear of failure and the fear of judgment, yeah. Very rarely does that creep up anymore. And if it does, I have a toolkit to help me to fix it. I do not believe that with personal development, any of us are ever what I call dumb. 
we're all work in progress. And I say this at the start of every single course I run and have ever run and I will ever will ever run in the future. I am work in progress too. Don't think that just because I've been training NLP and I've been doing this for over 10 years now that I am perfect, far from it. But what I will tell you is this, I've got a whole toolkit behind me that helps me to improve the quality of my life, to help me make decisions that work or don't work. I mean, those of you trained in NLP will all know about parts integration. I mean, that's going to stop people making decisions right there. We spend a lot of time doing belief changes, resolving people's internal conflicts so that they can make the decision that is right for them, that we do free them from the past. So they're not dragging their anchor anymore uh, with all that unresolved negative emotions from the past. We do empower people um, to learn new skills, new mindset skills that will help them to go on to achieve the things that they want to achieve, to help them change the way they look at things so that the things they look at start to change in their eyes when they change their perceptions. Um, And that's why I love doing what I'm doing. Now, I hope today's um, podcast episode has given you some kind of breakthrough. I genuinely do. And if you're joining me live, please let me know in the comments. Um, How is today's uh, podcast? Because it's been a more work in progress type. Let's do some stuff together. Let's focus on an area of our life. Let's make some um, observations of that. Let's look at what's driving that and understanding all that. And I I genuinely hope um, that today's um, podcast episode has been of massive values to you. Um, I will be suggesting that all our students listen to it as I go forward. I often recommend that they listen to the podcast as CPD. Um, And I will definitely be uh, recommending this because this is I don't know what you want to call it. Peak performance coaching, whether you want to call it life coaching, whether you want to call it transformational coaching. Um, But your mindset is absolutely critical to the results that you get in any area of your life. And if there is an area of your life that is not currently where you want it to be, then I go back to the question at the very beginning. What are you willing to do? Because if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Now, obviously, if you're watching this live, you'll know that you can come back and watch the video anytime. If you are listening to this on the usual podcast platforms after I have released it, uh, you'll know that you can go and watch this version on YouTube and actually see me and see the diagrams that I've been joining. So you're very welcome to go over onto YouTube um, and unleash your potential. If you go into YouTube and just type in Laura Evans NLP, unleash your potential, something like that, you'll find the channel and you'll be able to watch the video. If you would like to come and do some NLP training, if you've listened to me today thinking, oh, my goodness, I need more of Laura in my life. um, And I really want to really get my mindset in the right place. And I want to know if doing an NLP practitioner course is right for me. Um, Maybe you want to be able to do the kind of things I do as a coach and you want to become a certified NLP coach or a certified NLP master coach. We've had a couple of the master coaches here today doing some CPD uh, listening to this episode, which is great. Um, But if you want to help other people get unstuck and if you want to help other people work out how they can make the changes that they need to make, um, then becoming a certified NLP coach or a certified NLP master master uh, coach is certainly where it's at so if you want to find out more about our trainings um, then um, go on over to our website unleashyourpotential.org.uk and you'll find information about all the courses there if not drop us an email info at unleashyourpotential.org.uk and email Lynn uh, in the office and she will gladly set up either a Zoom call or a phone call with you to talk about the courses that we have and how they may be able to help you. And if after that you decide it's not for you, great, we'll wish you well. And if it is, then of course that means you get to come and train with me live. Uh, We are running NLP practitioner courses online so you can join us from anywhere in the world. We've had a lady sign up today who's joining us from the States. So that will be super exciting. Uh, we've had students from all the way around the world, um, which is great. Um, or if you'd prefer to train in person, then you can come join me in Cardiff here in the UK. Our next NLP practitioner course is coming up in September. Another one in uh, in November in Cardiff. 
um, and I'm doing an online prac course at the end of June and then one again uh, over September and October. So um, there is always courses available whenever you listen to this podcast episode. So just get in touch, info at unleashyourpotential.org.uk and we can chat with you about what's available. Um, if you're looking for a coach um, and you would like to work with me one-to-one, then drop Lynn an email as well or go on over to the laurahevans.co.uk um, and um, have a look at that website and get in contact. I only ever work with a very small number of clients one-to-one. If you would like to do that, um, then you are very welcome to reach out and we can explore whether that's something that might help. So I am going to love you and leave you and remind you that your life is a reflection of the decisions that you did or didn't make. The question is, are you willing to do what it takes? With love to all of you, take care and I'll see you soon.